<clears throat> okay, whoops. Do -do -do. Alrighty, howdy you guys out there in YouTube land. Uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And uh, give us a shout where you are, by the way, because we always love to hear from you. And that goes throughout the show. Uh, I'll be talking about something. I'd like to get your feedback, questions, etc. So um, we are, it's amazing. Here we are just two months shy of the end of this year. It's kind of amazing. 2021 is coming to a, an end before we know it. It's going to be, you know, f right around the corner is, you know, the holidays, official holidays, and uh, all sorts of stuff is happening as a result. All right, Dinesh in India, hello, and Leon in Maryland. I have a lot of family in Maryland, Baltimore. In fact, there used to be a Silver's Bakery there. Got a whole heritage. So good. We'll get started here. But before we do, I want to remind you guys, if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button, enable the bell so that you don't miss any of our future episodes. And just to officially tell you who I am, I'm Mark Silver. I'm an author educator, filmmaker in Carmel, California. And I'm going to be talking to you about one of my books here in a minute and a chapter from it. But before we do that, let's go over to our sponsor. We really appreciate these guys sponsoring us. Bay Photo Lab. Hey, you can grab 20% off on ornaments. That's kind of cool. I'm going to do some of those. Those are really cute and clever and you could give them as gifts and you don't have to just Put your dog on there you could put anything and there's a number of different shapes that you can get so 20 percent off there and 15 percent off on metal plates which can be really cool i have a few of those hanging around try them out 15 percent off and as always you get 25 percent off on your first order and just remember my mantra for you guys is make prints and put them on the wall that's your own personal gallery your best way of sharing your work is to put it in your home or workspace and show the world what you've got. Show your friends and family. And of course, you can get into exhibits as well. Bay Photo can help you make those prints, which is really, really helpful. Okay, so guys, here's what we're going to be talking about. And you may think I have a one-track mind, but I'm... Uh, grabbing my books here and dropping them on the floor. I talked about this subject in both this book, Advancing Your Photography. This was my first book. And in this book on creativity. And the subject is visualization. It's almost like I can't talk about it enough because it's that important. And I want you to keep your mind open. Or if you remember in my book, keep your teacup with some room in it. You know, when your teacup gets too full, meaning you've already decided you know everything there is to know about something, and somebody tries to pour something new into it, it just splashes all over the place. So keep some room in your cup, because you may think, Mark, I've heard everything you ever want to say about visualization. I got it. You don't need to talk to me about this anymore. Well, guess what? There's always something more to learn. And there's examples in, in all sorts of aspects of photography. So we're going to just dive into this a little bit this morning. Um, and, you know, it is in this book. It's the second chapter, and it guides the entire process of photography. There's that graph with visualization in the center driving everything. Well, let's, 
let's just click over here and start taking a look at, well, what is visualization? One of the things about visualization is that it gives you a blueprint. So this quote I love, visualize this thing that you want, see it, feel it, believe in it, believe in it. We could put underlining on that. Make your mental blueprint and begin to build. This is so applicable to your photography, you guys. You want to make sure you do believe in what you're photographing or the story that you're telling, because that's going to come across to your viewer. It's that genuineness. Like, why are you in? Why do you want me to look at this photograph? Why are you showing me this? There's something you believe in, and that's what your visualization carries across to the viewer. So this quote, you can make a checklist of this in your notebook anytime you're embarking on a project. Because remember, visualization doesn't just apply to the individual photograph. It applies to writing a book. You start with a vision. What's this all about? What am I going to tell my readers? If you have a display or an exhibit, you, you want to leave people like, what's the last thing they're going to be left with? That's your visualization. Like, what do I want them to walk away with as a result of seeing this body of work or a zine? Whatever it is you're creating, you want to put that there. And I'd like you guys to really spend some time working this out. Put this in your notebook. Vis just take each line here. Visualize this thing that you want. See it like you really get that mental image. See it. Feel it like what is this going to feel like when I produce this? How is that going to feel to me and the viewer? Believe in it like if you don't believe in it, why are you doing it? Get another project. Do something else. You know, find that thing that you do believe in. Make your mental blueprint and begin to build. And that's why it's so important. In building a house, you know, you'd waste a lot of effort, money, and materials if you didn't have a blueprint before you started. And you just started, like, putting up walls. And all of a sudden you found, well, wait a minute, that wall actually needs to have a door in it. And that had to be framed very differently because it had a door in it. So now i got to tear that wall down and rebuild it. Don't do that. You know, that's just, that's bad planning. Let's say you wanted to go on a trip and you said, well, I'm just going to drive. I don't know where I'm going. You might do that, but I find that very unsatisfying personally. I'd rather have a destination. I'd rather do research where I'm going, get an idea of what I'm going to photograph when I get there, look at some other photographers who may be photographed there. And, you know, you, you come away with a mental blueprint. And you, when you come back from that trip or that adventure and you've captured some photographs that you've already visualized, it makes a huge difference. It's a much more satisfying event. Okay, so we talk about a number of different things in this chapter of different examples of visualization, my own and, and others that I've interviewed. Practically every photographer I interviewed, starting with one of my first interviews with Chase Jarvis, I asked him about visualization and he gave a really, really good answer. And one of the things he said was, when you go out and begin to shoot, don't put the camera to your face. Walk around and start to visualize where are things What's going to look good in one location? Where is the light? Uh, in his case, he's sh you know he's shooting some advertising photographs with with models. You know where where are they going to look good in this setting? You know where the lighting is hitting him or the angles that he wanted. But he didn't put his camera right to his face immediately. He walked around and got the feel for the set. Then he started to visualize well, how I want this to be. I may want people running through the shot. And there's in that video, you can see that. And th those are all how you put it together. And then you visualize all the way through to the end. That means through the step one. Step two is knowing your equipment. So you visualize what equipment am I going to use? What lens am I going to shoot with? If I need lighting, what lighting am I going to use? That's that's all part of step two there is knowing your equipment. And step three, 
is capturing. So how are you going to frame it? Are you using leading lines? Or is there an S curve here? Is is there some contrasting you know element? Whatever those compositional tools, there's 83 of them. You're going to use that in your composition. You're going to use your lighting. Maybe I'm going to light it with Vermeer lighting, lighting coming through this window. That's all part of your visualization, you see, before you ever pick up a camera. And then the fourth step, fourth step is processing. And that carries out your vision. Like, how did you intend that to look? Is it black and white? Is it color? Is it a various different looks of color? By the way, we're just, I'm just, putting some final touches on a, a bunch of presets that I've created. Actually, one of our team members created. Uh, and we're going to be we're going to be giving some of those away. Uh, so stay tuned for that. So these are some interesting presets because they have I have some black and whites and I have some various color ones and some old film looks and kind of cool. And then your final stage, of course, is visualizing how you want to share your work to the world. How do you want to get it out? So one tool that you guys can use, and I really recommend that you do this, is making a shot list. This is right here in the book. Make a shot list. So you're about to go somewhere. Let's say you're visiting an old town that you had lived in before, and you moved away from it, and you want to go back and come away with some of the photographs of places that you used to live, work, or go to school, whatever it was. Make a, make a list of those and go get them. Now, you're going to find other shots that you did not anticipate. That's fine. That's called serendipity. And if you happen to come across something you never even expected, that's great. But you're prepared for it. Chance favors the prepared mind. That's what Louis Pasteur said to us. And it's very, very true. The more prepared you are, the better you are able to accept chance things that you didn't know were going to happen. This is an example of when I went to Paris, I wanted to come away with something. It wasn't just a, a postcard view of the Eiffel Tower. And, you know, I found this angled up shot with the clouds and I made it into a black and white. And I think it's different than what you would see hanging from a postcard rack. And it was my take on the Eiffel Tower. So very important. You when you travel and you go to places that have iconic views, it's very difficult maybe to come away with something unique. But you can, if you look at it and you use your visualization muscles, as it were, like, how can I make this look different? What can I do to change that up? Okay, now this I mentioned last week, and it bears repeating. How about being spontaneous and capturing the moment? that's still part of visualization because you're still putting your vision there. Where do you want to go photograph? Now, do you know ahead of time everything that's going to happen when you're out street shooting? No, of course not. But the fact that you are already pre-planning is a form of visualization. That person who walked in the frame unexpectedly, you didn't know that was going to happen, but you were prepared and you had already visualized getting these kinds of images. So that does fall under the umbrella of visualization. It really does. And also, when you're shooting action or you're shooting sports, you have to put yourself in the right position. And this is an example of uh, a photo essay that I did. I wanted to capture, in this suburban area, there was a, there's a, a polo club kind of hidden from everybody. But uh, these polo ponies are running around, and I had visualized that I wanted them together in an arc. I wanted to get a kind of an arc, which you can see here with their mallets, and I wanted them in a close formation because I captured a few other shots, and these guys were all kind of scattered around, didn't look like much. So I visualized this, and I was at, obviously at the other end of the field. I did not want to get run over by these polo ponies using a long lens, probably a 300 millimeter lens. And I waited until I saw them in formation that, to me, expressed geometry. And that was that was all pre-visualized. I had that on my shot list. This was one of the main reasons I went there, because the photo essay was about finding things that people did not expect in that environment, in that suburban environment. I was trying to show them 
they didn't have to travel to a foreign country to discover unique things. They could find these in their own backyard. That was kind of the message of that photo essay. And this was probably my first visualized photograph. This, there's a whole story about it in my book, Create. I was in the eighth grade. I fell out of a pine tree. I was actually shocked. I brushed against the power line and I got knocked out for a second and I fell down out of this pine tree about 30 feet. And uh, you got to read the whole story. I'm not going to tell you right now. But as, kind of as an odd result of this, I ended up capturing this photograph of my friends jumping off a sand dune. Had I not been shocked, I'd probably be jumping with them, but I was a little bit still kind of dazed, and I had the foresight to grab my camera and give them some direction. And I told them, when I say jump, you guys jump, okay? And I knew that I had to... So that was all pre-visualized. I knew I had to press the shutter at that exact moment and anticipate it and actually get ahead of the motion a little bit. That's one of the things about shooting sports or action. You have to be ahead of the motion because if you wait, it's too late. If I had hesitated even a little bit, this arc, this perfect, go back there, perfect arc would have disappeared and that would have lost the whole message of this shot, which is kind of the... There's an arc there, there's a playfulness. And that was definitely taught me a lesson. I didn't know the word visualization. I didn't, <laughs> I hadn't read the Ansel Adams books. I hadn't really had any photography education to speak of. But I did, and sort of instinctively, I was an artist. And I had an instinctive idea that I, what I wanted out of this. And I did it. Uh, yeah, John, chance favors the prepared is absolutely applicable to all aspects of living. Think about it. And the better prepared you are, the better you can handle anything. Uh, I used to teach mountaineering, and the whole point of our lessons were to prepare people. You know, it didn't matter that there were huge storms, that we were ca crossing raging rivers, that we're carrying heavy packs, that there was unpredictable stuff. If you were prepared, you could enjoy the mountains and not, not be freaked out by these occurrences. And that was really the point of that mountaineering education. How do you strengthen your visualization muscles? Go to museums. And if you can't go to a phys physically go to a museum, if you're in lockdown, we'll go to their website. And there's a whole bunch of them out there. The Rijksmuseum, I love their work. Uh, the, the MoMA in, in New York. In your own country or your own area, you've got museums. If you can go there physically, that's even better. Go there. It's really better to see the art on the wall if you can. Get as close as you can to that. The next best thing is to see it in a book, as the author intended or the artist intended it. Uh, you can go to your library if they're open and check out some art books or photography books. And if you can't do that, maybe there's a bookstore you could go to, and they have used bookstores all over the place. Find some good used books. And if you can't do that, then go online. So that's kind of how it, it rates museum, book, online. Okay. Fantastic photographer, Joey L. You know, when I interviewed him about, oh gosh, 11 years ago, uh, he told me, you know, how did I ask him, like, how did you get your style? And he said, I studied the works of the great painters. And I looked at their paintings and I looked at how they, how they lit the subject and how it was framed. So in this case, there's added light to his subject. I believe he has a, a pro photo flash over here that he carries with him. Just enough to bring, you know, this subject from being really, it's backlit. So being in the shadows like the rest of this to adding some fill light here. It's not blasting away at the subject, but it's, it's enough to make it uh, appear just like a painting would be. Because the painter wouldn't, wouldn't paint it into the shadows necessarily. He, probably want to bring out the subject. So that's something you should do constantly. Look at art and, you know, it could be a movie. A movie is 24 photographs per second. 
There's a lot of frames in there you can look at and you can get an idea of what did they do? And you can ask yourself these questions like how did, how do, how did the artist light the subject? How did they frame it? What was, what was important that, what did they make important in the, in the subject by adding light to it? And what did they want to subtract importance from by keeping it dark? Those are the things that you can learn and take your notebook along and write those things down. Okay, I do this all the time. And I recommend this to you guys. You can do it like this, kind of your rectangular frame. I generally just do this. And it does really help you to train your eye, if you think about it. If you're playing tennis, you don't just go out into a match and start playing. You practice all the time. Maybe you have a machine that you practice with, and you're just practicing your, your lobbing or whatever it is. You're certainly practicing serving. You're just getting more and more familiar. Practice with your eyes is so important because you don't just grab images out of nowhere. You have to train your eye to find them and to see them. That's another form of being prepared, isn't it? Chance favors the prepared mind. So if you've done a lot of this, you're already thinking in terms of what's going to look good in that frame. Very simple exercise. Just do it all the time. You're on a train. You're waiting in line. You're, you're bored, whatever. People will think you're kind of cool. Wow, this guy must be a director or something. He's doing this thing here with his hands. And don't, don't be shy about it. Use that as your vehicle to improve your visualization. And then, of course, at the end of every chapter, I have what's called the crash course summary, which summarizes these points. And I've, I've given you the key points there. So I want you guys to constantly think in terms of how do you elevate this skill? How can I become better at visualization? How can I use these things? And if you want to use them in the rest of your life to visualize, what do I want my relationship with my significant other to be like? You know, that's sometimes not a bad thing to step back. Or my kids. Or my boss. How would I really like this to be? You know, we can all get caught up in the motion of things and just sort of be dragged along. But what about just take a, take a step back and go, I want to put this together in a better way. I want to be an artist in life. I want to put it there. So how do I envision this, this relationship being? How do I envision my own self as an artist? That's a really good one. What's my vision of myself as an artist, as a photographer? What's my main genre? What's my message that I'm trying to tell people? These are really important subjects, you guys. And you should have a notebook. If you haven't heard me say this to you, it's in my books. But I have dozens of these notebooks that I use all the time. And write your thoughts down here because it really helps you with your vision to put them on paper and even draw them. You can draw your shot list just like a, a storyboard, like they do in the movies. You can storyboard out your what you're trying to tell people. Okay, so hello from uh, Puebla, Mexico. And uh, I spent some very important time in my life in Mexico. And I have a whole chapter in here, when I, not a chapter, a section of a chapter about going to Mexico when I was uh, in high school. And uh, I was a senior in high school. My last semester, I went to Mexico, and I came away with some, frankly, really remarkable photographs. And it's, it was such a photogenic country. I've, I've shot a lot of photographs in Mexico, and it's just wonderful. So there you have it. It's in the book. Okay, before we end off here, I'm, I'm going to open up things to your questions or comments. What does visualization mean to you? How can you use how can you utilize it? Why is it so important? What do you struggle with in terms of visualization? Is there is it all just perfectly rolls out for you or do you struggle with anything? I mean, I didn't get it right away. I had to really work it over and spent a lot of time trying to figure out well these things I've told you, you know, they didn't just occur to me in one breath. I had to figure it out. 
Like, how do you strengthen your visualization? And, and why should you look at all forms of art, not just photographs, when you're trying to strengthen your visualization? So if you guys don't have any questions or comments, that's fine. You can always add them later in the link to the video. Um, one thing I'd like to ask you, and I'll, make, I'll probably make a separate video just to, for this. You guys who have been traveling along with AYP for a while, you probably have gotten some benefit from this, right? And I actually need your help. We're putting together a, a, launch, a new launch. We're going to be launching at the end of this month a whole a new thing regarding my courses and webinars and all sorts of stuff. But I would love to have some testimonials from you guys. Just tell... Tell, don't tell them about me necessarily. You don't have to talk about what Mark did. I'm rather, I'd rather hear what it, what it, how it affected you. Like what were the, what was the before and after for you? It may be from one video. It may be from a whole series of classes. But I'd love to hear the benefits. Make it a short little um, iPhone video or, or phone, you know, whatever your camera you got, iPhone. And uh, Jared's going to put a link in there. You guys can drop it in there in the Dropbox. We'll be sending it out, too. So if you're on our mailing list, you should be on our mailing list. If you're not, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. But I would love to, I'd love to hear from you and see you. Shoot it, you know, wherever you want. But it could be, you know, in, the, in, your, in your studio, you know, with your photographs on the back wall or whatever. You know, be artful about it. But... It doesn't have to be complicated, and it doesn't have to be long. One or two minutes is totally fine, okay? Please do that for me, and I will be making a video specifically for this with all the instructions. So on that note, I'm going to end off. Jared, do we have anything else we need to mention here? Um, I'm going to be putting a link here uh, okay. in a second for, uh, for people to sign up on the newsletter. Yeah, good idea. Uh, so that you can do that um, and also remind people who are part of our international audience that the united states will be going through daylight savings change oh yeah uh, we'll be going back to standard time so our clocks will go back an hour uh yeah. so please be aware of that uh we will be posting everywhere uh but uh so the live stream will be at a slightly different time and uh so will our classes and other events that we do so yeah, pay attention to that. Uh, that. That's very helpful. Thank you for reminding everybody. Okay, well, listen, you guys. If you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe, enable the bell, leave your comments. I do read them all. I really do. And uh, I'll answer any that need answering. So, you know, put your comments in the video. And you can share. You can like. You can definitely subscribe. And most importantly... For you, I really do want you to remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. I'll see you next week. If you're in AYP+, I'll see you on Tuesday. All right.